So there was this young boy. He came from a situation not so good. Uh, yeah, he was born an addict. He was very sad. And uh, there was a lot of abuse, physical abuse, as he was growing mm -hmm. inside. When uh, we first met him, he was full of rage. From six months, slapping and hitting people. When you see uh, uh, ultrasound, sorry. Oh, ultrasound. Uh, if, this, if somebody drops a glass, yeah, like a the baby Just goes like, like this deer, yeah. and then comes back again. You can imagine mm -hmm. if a mother's being beaten. This child came to Amma first and Ted, I, I don't know what this child was going to say to Amma, but it wasn't going to be nice. Mm -hmm. But what Amma said to this child was more than nice. It transformed him. I actually had no attraction to Anna. I went with no attraction. And Anna grabbed my heart for five years. That's it. Not long, Ted. Five years. Well, no, that is not a long time. That's not a long time. But I have become truly myself. Well, who is Marianne? Ah, whoever you see, I don't know. <laughs> In her life today, Mary Ann Luckett has good reason to laugh and to love because of Amma Shri Karunamai. Welcome to Soul Journeys. This interview was recorded on July 13th, 2019 in Forsyth, Georgia. And How did you discover her? Well, I went to the Shreem Center here in Forsyth, Georgia, and I wanted a place for my children and to come and feel free. Mm -hmm and they were so welcomed. I was not interested. I was just a side, it, this was just a place. And then I met Amma. And in my heart, I said to myself, who is this short person? <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's this? this? What is this? And then after the event, Amma walked past me and she spoke to me as if you and I are speaking as clear as a bell inside my heart. And she said magical words to me. And it shocked me. And inside, I said, oh, she is the one. She's one. And, and I take it this one you're referring to has never quite presented himself or herself in your life before that's captivated you so deeply. No, that's right. I have had uh, paths that I've been on that were very meaningful to me, mm -hmm. but it's Amma, Her Holiness, that has brought me to my heart, it has brought me to myself. Well, when she said some th important things to you that caught your attention, are you at liberty to share some, broadly speaking, the message that she gave you? It's those private things. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> we can only speculate. <laughs> well, what attracted you to that event at the Shreem Center to begin with, if you didn't know anything about Amma? My partner. Okay. It was the Auntie Rutram for 2014. Oh. And it, she's like, I'm going, I'm bringing the kids, and if you want to come, there's a second car. <laughs> yeah. Did you guys know anything about the Auntie Rutram? Yes. Oh, you did? Yes, from a path beforehand. Oh, okay. And so we understood the Rudrum. So you're pretty advanced then. No, I am a baby. <laughs> <laughs> the more I go on this path, I know more I am a baby. <laughs> and I'm always a complete surprise to you then. Yes, a complete surprise. Yeah. I, I think of her as sort of like the embodiment of love walking this earth today. I feel like it's, uh, I feel like the closer someone is to God, the, the truth, mm -hmm. let's say, the more subtle the energy is. And so it's, it's, for me, it was very difficult to see. If she hadn't knocked me over the head and spoke loudly to me inside my heart, I would have missed it, totally missed it. So for those who are new to this, uh, let's just give a thumbnail sketch and a sentence or two about mm. the Shreem Center. What is it and why is it here? Uh, the Shreem Center is uh, Amma's ashram in America. It's her first ashram. In Forsyth, Georgia. Forsyth, Georgia. And it is a place where uh, it's kind of uh, inside, outside. And so it has these 20, 11 feet by 11 feet uh, structures where all of the sacred fires are done and the prayers are done. So 500, 1,000 people can be there. 
at the same time. And it's like walking into the deepest part of India that is not that present in, even in India anymore. And was that a brand new experience for you also? Yes, totally. I'm, I'm a white girl. <laughs> <laughs> What's it like to have 20 fires going in Forsyth, <laughs> Georgia in the summertime <laughs> under a metal roof? <laughs> and she's there the whole time, too. She's there. It's magnificent. Yeah. You know, you walk in one way and you leave completely and something else. And it's open to anybody. It's open to everybody. As a matter of fact, everybody's invited of yeah. all religions, of all thoughts. Everyone is welcome. And people can find out just by uh, Googling or going to the web for srimshreemcenter.org? That's correct. Okay. Women are asked by Ama to be Ritwicks. That's an interesting word that many people in America have never heard before. Yeah. Tell us what a Ritwick is. So um, this past May, we did the Ati Rudra, and Ama's goal was to have as many women as possible performing and, and chanting the Rudra, which is very uh, against tradition in India so today. very big on that, and I don't believe it's ever been done before in that's, the world. That's correct. And uh, when she would, when Amma would talk about it, she would talk about it in the sense of balance. It is not that women should be raised higher mm -hmm. or men should be raised higher, but honored in each yeah. as are uniquely ourselves. That's one of her strongest suits, I think. Yes, and that the woman's voice is naturally uh, uh, quieter than a man's voice. And so you might have 10 women chanting to two men or one man's chant, and then there's balance. Mm -hmm. So she was really uh, wanting the balance in the Ante Rudra and for women to be able to step forward and perform the Ante Rudra, which is so uh, beautiful. So that gives a taste of what the Shreem Center is, and if they go online and Google your website, people can find out the schedule of events coming up. That's right. Every year is a very special event that Amma comes to yeah. and, uh, and performs these different yagnams. But all year, actually, we have these magnificent priests. Yeah. And they are every day are performing pujas, and people are welcome to dip into that pot mm -hmm. from anywhere in the world. And it's a Shirdi Sai Baba temple. Yes. Wrapped into one. That was Amma's idea, I think. Yes, yes, and, she installed Shirdi Sai Baba. And I know back uh, in the spring when you had lots of people here doing the Rudram, doing the, the Yagna, there were people from not just America, but from around the world. Over 80 countries, Ted, were there. And I always say it's 50 miles south of Atlanta, and if you come from around the world and you can get through the <laughs> maze called the Atlanta airport, you can get yourself here. <laughs> yeah. We should just have a little taxi service at the bottom of the airplane. <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> at the bottom of the airplane, yeah. That would, that would get more people to come. Uh, so how has Amma, you've already given us a bit of an idea, transformed your life in a way that you know not only is for real, but is forever? So there was this persona of Marianne that uh, uh, I thought on the outside looked pretty good. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a, I'm fairly successful, I have a life, I have relationships, I, I have the, what looks like a pretty you know, good life on the inside, however steeped in insecurities and doubts and uh, and tied up in the ego thoughts and processes uh, with Amma for five years. That's it. Not long, Ted. Five years. Well, I know. That is not a long time. That's not a long time. But I have become truly myself. Well, who is Mary? Ah, whoever you see, I don't know. <laughs> It, you know, but it's I, uh, what you see on the outside is what is I feel on the inside. Who's the old Marianne? A carbon copy of somebody she thought she should be. Yeah. Well, she's she's a pretty effective teacher, and she's sly because you don't always know how she's getting these lessons to be yeah. embedded in you. Sometimes it's a it's a sandpaper rub. Yeah. Mm, oh. You know, difficult. Yeah. Other times it's those blessed moments or it's in a, a dream or it's but it's all the rub to shine all of our uh, crystals all of our diamonds you had a story you, you said you would, wouldn't mind volunteering to share with us in, in general terms just because the point of the story sounds like it's worth hearing do you mind if I ask you yes about that? yes 
So there was this young boy, mm -hmm. and uh, he came from a situation not so good. Uh, he was born an addict, and uh, and born an addict. He was okay. Yeah, so at ten years he could go get his tenure chip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he was born an addict. It was very sad, and uh, there was a lot of abuse, physical abuse, as he was growing mm -hmm. inside, and. Uh, so when uh, we first met him, he was full of rage. Bless his little heart. You know, that's, that's how he was wired. And uh, he was, uh, from six months, slapping and hitting people. Just full of rage. He and had that conditioning before he came out of his mother. It was all wired in there, you know. When you see a... Uh, 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 you can see in uh, echocardiogram, it's not echocardiogram, a um, ultrasound, sorry. Oh, ultrasound. Uh, if, this, if somebody drops a glass, like a deer. the baby just goes like, like this deer, yeah. and then comes back again. Just from a broken glass, you can imagine mm -hmm. if a mother's being beaten and those things, right? just not good. So this child came to Amma first and Ted, I, I don't know what this child was going to say to Amma, but it wasn't going to be nice. Mm -hmm. Or so you thought. Well, so I knew. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, Amma looked at this child and tried to bring him to her, and uh, there was no, there was no, it was nothing that was going to happen. And so he left, and the next visit, he got a little bit closer. And then the next visit, he got a little bit closer. And then one day, he found himself in the elevator with Alma. <laughs> he was uh, eight. And uh, Alma got him. And from that day on, he has been a staunch lover of Alma. Well, that's a miraculous story. And his whole being has changed. Now this child, when you see him with other children, he's got his arms around them, helping them if they're struggling, helping them to come up and move along their path or do whatever they were doing. Mm -hmm. It's really magnificent. Yeah. That's remarkable. And if you think about where that child was heading to such an unhappy life, to where the child is now heading mm -hmm. is uh, remarkable. That must have left a deep impression upon yourself as well. Gratitude. Yeah. Gratitude. Uh, and Ted, there's more than one child. If I see anything with Ama, I see that she takes care of everyone's children. Now you have a position of, uh, of authority at Dream Center. Hmm. Uh, What's the future for the Good future? Good to know. <laughs> and what's the future? What's the future of Marianne? Where are you going to be 10 years from now? Where Alma wants me. The future of the Shreem Center is her sh hers. But I can tell you what it is becoming, okay. looking like it's becoming. A retreat site, a place for somebody to come out into the uh, 28 acres uh, in the country yeah. where you can get away from all the city and get away from everything and come and... Uh, follow the schedule. It's a place where Amma can bring India and everybody from the world can come to. It's a place where grand temples will be. She once told us that there will be temples here that will last a thousand years. Well, and do you have to be Hindu to be a member or to appreciate all this? Well, I have to say I'm not. Okay, I would guess that most people probably aren't. Yes, and uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's, do you want to know God? Yeah. That's right. Do you want to know yourself? Mm -hmm. Do you want to experience that love coming out of your hearts? You know, for a complete stranger and the people that you love intimately in your family. Do you want to see your family become peaceful, harmonious? Mm. And the last point is up to you. What would you like to say that you haven't thought about saying about your experience this stage in your life? Not going to ask you your age. <laughs> Let me so see. I better dye my hair. <laughs> I know it's only been five years, and that's really short span. It's a very short period of time. To have so much happen to help transform a person's life. Yeah. Um, 
How would you compare the present day today, Marianne, to the Marianne of five years ago? Night and day. Mm -hmm. I'm comfortable in my skin. But I have to say that Alma has promised us a great promise. It's a secret. <laughs> But the promise is, is that the moment that we are ready to give up this body and move on, she will be there to keep our brains on God so that we will then transcend this physical body and go to God. There's no greater gift. Well, that's a nice package deal, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> there is no greater gift. The final question is the $64 question having to do with meditation. Of all the avatars, pointers, spiritual teachers, guides, sages I've met, she's at the top of the list of really trying to convince people to meditate. Yes. And there's two categories of meditators, those who are really good and those who are like mm. me. <laughs> and the other category. What do you feel about that role that you must feel some responsibility of taking on for yourself of yes. being a meditator? Yes. Yes, and I can, I'm not um, I'm not great, Ted, but I am I'm dedicated, mm -hmm. and uh, even if it's just for a small amount of time, mm -hmm. then I am dedicated to that, and hoping that it can be larger and larger and larger and larger. I think that's the response a lot of us have, and it's a yes. perfectly good answer. Yeah. Yeah, Marianne, thank you very much. Mm. This is a, really a wonderful interview. Some great <laughs> stories. And even eclipsing the wonderful story you told me about this young boy is how all of this has happened in a blink of an eye in your life. Yes. In five years. Yes. So God bless you. Good luck. Mm. We'll do this again five years down the okay. road. Okay. Namaste. <laughs> yeah. Jay Karunamai. Jay Karunamai.